This video will introduce you to working with vector data in Shapefile and GeoDatabase feature class format. To start things off, I've opened ArcGIS Pro and I'm creating a new project with the option to create a folder for the project selected. Moving over to Windows File Explorer, we see the project folder that was created when the project was generated and three files within there. The file GeoDatabase for the project, the ArcGIS project file, and then the ArcGIS toolbox. Now I'm heading over to the Vermont GeoData portal, and I'm going to download some data for use within ArcGIS. I'm grabbing the ACT250 districts and downloading it in shapefile format. The ACT250 districts are polygon data. I'm now extracting the zipped up shapefile, and let's go in and take a look at the shapefile components. A shapefile is not a single file, but a collection of files. Deleting or modifying any one of these files outside of GIS software could corrupt the entire shapefile. Moving back to ArcGIS, I'm going to insert a new map and then add this shapefile to that map. I saved the shapefile to my ArcGIS Pro project folder, so I'm going to open the catalog pane and navigate to that folder and then right click to add the shapefile to my current map. Once the data are loaded into the map, ArcGIS automatically zooms to the extent of the shapefile. Over on the left hand side of the screen, we see the shapefile appear within the table of contents. Anytime we add data to ArcGIS, it's simply pointing to that location of the data. So if I go into File Explorer, take my shapefile, and move it into a new subdirectory called temp, ArcGIS will no longer be able to display the data when I open the map. Moving back into ArcGIS, we see that the layer still appears in the table of contents, but there's a red exclamation point next to it. This indicates that ArcGIS can no longer find the data. This is because we moved it into that temp subfolder. Since I haven't deleted the data, I can simply click on the exclamation point and then navigate to the new location of the data to re-specify the path location for ArcGIS. Each of these polygons has associated tabular information, what we call attributes. Right-clicking on the layer in the table of contents and opening the attribute table launches the attribute table view. By default, a shapefile has two mandatory fields, the FID, which is a unique ID, and the shape, which is the geometry type. There are also additional fields here, the ACT250 field, the department field, and the division field. These are all fields that someone added in. They're not automatically added by the software like the FID in the shape field. The attribute table displays all the records associated with each polygon. To view the records associated with an individual polygon, we can simply scroll our mouse over and click on it, and this will launch the individual attribute table for the polygon that we just selected. Shapefiles are a wonderful format for exchanging geospatial data because they can be read by almost any software package, but they're not the most robust. Moving your vector data into a geodatabase will improve performance and allow you to take advantage of additional functionality such as area calculations and topology. You can either export your shapefile into the geodatabase, or the method I prefer is to right-click on the geodatabase and choose to import feature classes. You can now select one or more feature classes to import into that geodatabase. In running the Feature Class to Geodatabase tool and selecting the ACT250 district shapefile, I'm importing it from a shapefile into a geodatabase feature class. The polygons will remain exactly the same, but we'll see some differences in the attribute table. Once the tool is finished running, you can see that I have a new polygon feature class called ACT250 districts within my geodatabase. When I add that to the map, you can see the polygons are identical to the ones in the shapefile. The only difference here is the symbology or coloring of those polygons is different, but that has nothing to do with the underlying data. Going into the properties for each one of these feature classes and clicking on the source tab, we can see that the source tells us the difference in these two feature classes. The geodatabase is stored in a file geodatabase, and the shapefile is designated and stored as a shapefile feature class. 
Thus, we're simply looking at two different approaches to storing vector polygon data. Now I'll open up the attribute tables to go under the hood to see how these two feature classes differ. If you recall from our previous exploration of the shapefile feature class attribute table, it had two internal fields, FID and shape. If we go over and look at the geodatabase feature class, we see that it also has two internal fields, object ID and shape. In this case, the object ID is similar to the FID. It's the internal unique identifier for each record. Because the object ID starts at 1 and the FID starts at 0, these two unique identifiers do not match. Scrolling across in the GeoDatabase feature class attribute table, we see two other fields, shape length and shape area. These are automatically added to a polygon feature class within a GeoDatabase. Shape length is the perimeter, and shape area is the area. Both of these are in map units, which is referenced from the coordinate system. This video introduced you to working with shapefile and geodatabase feature classes. As we learned, shapefiles are a great format for exchanging geospatial vector data because almost any CAD or GIS software package will read a shapefile. Storing your vector data as geodatabase feature classes does have some advantages. Geoprocessing tends to be faster. For polygon features, the area is automatically calculated. For linear features, the length is automatically calculated and you can take advantage of advanced functionality such as topology. Regardless of the format your vector data is stored in, remember that when you add it to an ArcGIS Pro project, it's only a link to the data. Deleting, moving, or renaming that data outside of ArcGIS will cause the link to be lost.